Hi, this is Remy from the Applications team. This tutorial provides a detailed presentation related to the extraction of statistics from fiber material, the local fiber fold infraction, surface area, as well as the major orientation and orientation tensors reflecting the local dispersion of orientation of fibers. We will also see a few options about visualizing these results. I assume here that you are already familiar with the X-Fiber extension and confident that you are able to trace the fiber center line precisely. If not, you may also refer to the relevant video tutorials. We will be using a small dataset of a glass fiber reinforced plastic, for which we provide here a download link. The archive contains projects detailing the extraction of the fiber center line and the segmentation of individual fiber, which I described in another tutorial. We will just load this project to obtain the grayscale image, its binary segmentation, and the fiber center lines that were obtained from the other projects. Now we will actually look at the various features and options of a single module called Spatial Graph Local Statistics. As the name implies, this module can be created and can operate on any dataset of type spatial graph, and in particular to fiber centerline datasets. With respect to statistics, this module provides information regarding the volume fraction, surface area, major orientation, and orientation tensors. Finally, the term local refers to the fact that these statistics are integrated over local subvolumes. As you can see, the interface of the module has many parameters. We'll go through them progressively. Let's start with the very last parameter line. Here you can select which statistics you want to compute and in which format they should be presented. Density or volume fraction, surface area, principal orientation, orientation tensor can be represented as regular lattice object, respectively of scalar, vector or tensor fields, and or collected into a spreadsheet. Decompose tensor generate additional columns in the spreadsheet where the tensor is decomposed into principal axes and corresponding eigenvalues. Select the spreadsheet output. With the default parameters, the spreadsheet will not be too large, so uh, we can even ask for the tensor decomposition and press apply. Except for the spreadsheet, all other results are presented as regular lattices. So volume fraction and surface area are standard scalar fields, which can be visualized, for example, with a color wash. The major orientation is represented as a vector field for which you may use, for example, a vector slice. Another visualization that I uh, like is uh, for an orientation vector field um, is obtained by converting the vector field into RGB data and visualize it with an auto slice. The color code used corresponds to the colors given to the axis when using the module local axis. Tensor fields can be visualized as ellipsoid using the tensor view module. Please note that the vector slice and tensor view do not necessarily show the exact vector and tensors that have been computed, but intrinsically rely on linear interpolation to show some vectors and tensors at some locations, which are controlled via the resolution parameters. I invite you to study the different visualization options available for vector and tensor data in the display menu and the corresponding documentation. Please note that it is also possible to use arithmetic channel works to extract individual components of vector or tensor field as scalar images.
spreadsheet as are of course less graphical but indicate the precise information that has been computed at each requested location in a way that can be easily exported. Let's get back at the Spatial Graph Local Statistics module. We have seen the results that were first generated all contain 20 by 20 by 20 values and all have the same voxel size. This was actually determined by the parameter resolution of voxel size depending on the selected mode. If we look at the bounding box of those data sets, we see that it is the same bounding box as the input Spatial Graph object. In case this is different from the original grayscale image, we may connect a reference dataset and the corresponding bounding box parameter will be automatically adjusted. To summarize, this group of parameters controls the output lattice, the bounding box and the number of voxels and spacing of the output datasets. This grid or lattice defines locations around which statistics are computed and where they will be positioned for display, the whole following the nodes of a regular lattice. By default, the statistics are integrated over the entire output voxel volume, thus without any overlap between different subvolumes. This behavior may be modified through the block port. If you select full volume, the requested statistics will be integrated over the entire subvolumes. And since there is no point in generating output images with a single voxel, only one summary table will be generated in this case. By selecting user defined, you may indicate half the size of the subvolume. Be careful that if you select a value smaller than half the size of actual voxel output voxels, you will not perform any measurement in certain areas of the image. If you select a larger value, you will introduce overlaps between adjacent blocks, resulting in results that look smoother. This is particularly relevant to do if you wish to have a high resolution display on the outputs, for example on the orientation field. In particular, you should make sure that all your blocks contain enough fibers for the statistics to be meaningful. For computing the tensor field, we simply accumulate all segments of fibers that are inside the integration domain, and the major orientation actually corresponds to the principal axis of the tensor. The spatial graph contains all the relevant information for this. However, for the volume fraction and surface area, the graph itself does not contain any information about the size or shape of the fibers. In the module Spatial Graph Local Statistics, we have some options to control this, which are available in this group of ports. Using a cylinder or ab arbitrary object model, we assume that all fibers have the same and constant cross-section, and we mathematically derive their volume and surface area in the considered subvolume. If such an assumption is too coarse, we propose as an option to connect a binary image represented a segmented version, a binary segmentation of the fibers using the port object mask. When we use such an object mask, the volume fraction is computed as a proportion of voxels belonging to the fibers within each integration block, and the surface area will be derived from a mesh that is, in, that is generated internally. Only the surface between fiber and the surrounding matrix will be accumulated and not the surface of contact between different fibers. Finally, you may have subvolume partially overlapping with the exterior of the object, as is the case in this example. In such situation, we can create a binary mask of the region of interest. Here, a simple closing will do.
and we can connect it here. This will allow computing the useful volume within each sub-volume, report that value in the spreadsheet, and allow computing a non-biased volume fraction value. Please note that the surface area value is not normalized by the volume of interest. It only accumulates the surface of each triangle present in the continent subvolume. In summary, this tutorial covers the usage of the Spatial Graph Local Statistics module, which is a powerful tool to generate visual and numerical summary statistics about the volume fraction surface area and dispersion of orientation within fibrous materials. Thank you for following this tutorial, and goodbye.